It's a crime that makes Jacksonville seem like the wild, wild west. An ambush, an attempted robbery, a shootout in the middle of Beach Boulevard, and a hero trying to protect others. It's been more than 50 years since George Swinder was murdered, and his wife and six children are hoping that now is finally the time they get answers. In the files of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, you will find a weathered brown folder marked homicide. Case number 96750. Looking back through our um, case history and researching, I, I, I don't see anything like this ever that's happened um, in, in, in our history. It began like a normal day, June 17, 1970. 43-year-old George Swinder and 31-year-old Harry Shank arrived at the Zares department store on Beach Boulevard in their Brinks armored truck to pick up a cash deposit. Schwinder stayed in the truck, and as Shank walked out of the store carrying the money, witnesses say bullets started flying. He's coming out of the store, and two gunmen opened fire on him. Harry Shank was shot, returning fire as he stumbled back into the store. George Schwinder opened the truck door and began firing at the attackers to try and protect his partner, but he was struck multiple times. The gunman jumped into a getaway car parked in the lot with the driver and took off leaving the money and a horrific scene. Bullet holes piercing the front door of Zares and the side of the Brinks truck. Harry Shank lay bleeding inside the store. George Swinder also wounded inside the cab of the truck. Shank would survive the attack, but George Swinder, a husband and father of six, died. If he's just a family man and he's gunned down in broad daylight uh, for some people who wanted to take some money. The getaway car, a 1961 white Buick, was found less than a mile away on Cortez Road. There was some debate about a description of the attackers, but investigators now say it appears to have been two white males as the shooters and a woman as a getaway driver. All were described as young, likely in their 20s at the time. George Swinder's children say that day is burned into their memories. His oldest child, heard the news alert come across the radio. And they said there's been a, a robbery of a Brinks truck in town. And that's all they said. More details to follow. And we kind of looked at each other and we said, Dad's on an in-town run today, isn't he? They had a bad feeling that was confirmed when their father's boss arrived at their home to tell their mother the news. The World War II veteran, husband, and father who coached their baseball teams and adored his children was gone. Um, would do anything for you or help you out in anything you need. Just a great guy all around. The story went nationwide and a search ensued. About a week and a half later, an arrest was made. 23-year-old Charles Catton of Jacksonville, arrested and charged with murder after newspaper reports say he sought medical attention for a bullet wound to the arm. And a witness ID'd him as one of the shooters at Zares. He was also on parole after serving two and a half years on a bank robbery charge. But newspaper reports show a co-worker testified he worked with Catton the day of the robbery. And witnesses described the man who shot George Schwinder as having hair that stuck out beneath his straw hat. Those testifying on Catton's behalf said he had shaved his head about six weeks prior to the robbery. In the end, the grand jury did not indict Catton for the murder. And there has never been another arrest since. But currently, as of right now, we do not have a suspect in custody on this case. But detectives are not out of leads. They still have some of the evidence from the scene, including a straw hat. Witnesses say one of the gunmen wore and fell off his head as he was running back to the getaway car. In the hat, a single hair, but no follicle. So no DNA for right now. Investigators say, though, they are holding on to it because technology is quickly progressing and they hope to be able to test it soon. Until then, George Swinder's children and wife remember his heroic actions, trying to save his partner and other innocent lives that day. And they hope someday there will be answers about who took his life. About it, thinking like maybe one day they'll find him. But that day's never come still today. 
I did speak with the daughter of Harry Shank, who tells me that though he did survive that day, the blood transfusions he was given were tainted with hepatitis C, which would lead to complications throughout his life and his eventual death in 2006. And they too are praying for answers in this case. If you know anything about the Brinks armored truck robbery in Jacksonville in 1970, please call the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Katie Jeffries, First Coast News, on your side.